Today we're harvesting a bunch of purple Congo potatoes that have popped up as volunteers in the garden bed behind me here. How's it going folks, it's Rob here. Today I'm going to unearth a load of volunteer purple Congo potatoes from this wicking bed behind me here and we'll probably find some volunteer uh, turmeric in there as well I suspect. So thought I'd bring you along and give you a bit of a look at the harvest. Fingers crossed we're going to get at least one or two meals worth out of these little guys. Now these purple Congo potatoes, they're a little waxy potato. Definitely great for mashing, boiling, turning into potato salad, that sort of thing. Not too good at roasting or turning into chips. Um, we've done that once or twice ourselves and they do turn out to be rather miserable. Definitely a great masher or boiler. So what I'll do is I'll grab the garden fork and we'll start digging around and see what we can turn up. So this is the wicking bed these guys have set up home in. It's got some perennial leeks in there. And there's the little potato patch in the center. And there's also some uh, volunteer turmeric that um, grew last season as well. We've got some basil, more perennial leeks, a cabbage going to flower and some chard up there. There's also a large cherry tomato growing in here last season. But how these potatoes got into this bed was through some soil that was used to fill a massive hole left by a turmeric harvest a couple of years back. And what's happened is we've had probably three small crops of the potatoes come through and every time we've harvested them, a couple of small ones have been left behind until this season we've had, yeah, a rather nice crop of these purple Congo potatoes. So the last two or three weeks have started to die back a bit. We've got some 28 spot lady beetle damage on the leaves. I've also seen some flea beetles on there and I sort of suspect there might be um, some mites taking over these leaves too. So I figured I might as well take the garden fork and dig them out. So you can see where some of the small potatoes have started to sprout again. A couple of weeks back um, I did a small little harvest just from this section here in a garden update clip and obviously I've left some small ones behind and they've sprouted. So I'll set the camera up and grab the garden fork and we might take out this little clump here first and see what sort of a yield we're gonna get. So just down in here, you might be able to make out um, these sprouts here. These are actually turmeric um, leaves that have died off over winter. So we'll pull them as well, see what sort of a small turmeric harvest we get. There's another plant up the back here. And I just saw this. This is a small praying mantis oasica. So that's basically, um, yeah, a praying mantis egg. So hopefully they've hatched. Doesn't look like there's anything in there and they've gone throughout the garden. So I might just pop him up there on the wire anyway. Let's grab this garden fork. Actually, just on the surface here, I've just spotted a few tiny potatoes. Here's a couple of um, spuds I obviously missed in the last harvest. And that just gives you some idea of the size of some of them. So leaving something like that behind will create another plant. Absolutely fantastic when you think of it like that. I just dropped it on the ground, so we'll end up with one in the pavers now. <laughs> so I'm not um, pulling the stalks off yet because I sort of want to know where these plants are. Let's give it a soil a bit of a lift. Well, there you go. There's obviously the um, parent potato looking rather manky. There's some nice ones down here. So a couple of small ones there, as well as a little worm. Pop you back, Mr. Worm. I'll just grab my bag for these. Now it's a matter of getting the hand in and through the soil. I'm not expecting a bumper harvest, but you know, it'd be nice to get a couple of meals worth. So just down here, I have one plant just growing on the side of the bed. Give it a bit of a lift. Loads of worms in here. That's the small potato by the look of it that started this little clump here. And we've got mainly small potatoes off here, but still. So a couple of nice bite-sized taters from that little area. So these guys here, they're, they're not supposed to grow real big, like your, you know, your Desirees or the more traditional potatoes you see around. Look at this big fella. Should put him back under some soil, I think. So we'll move around a little bit. So I'll just tuck into this small clump here and see what we can find. A couple of small ones on the surface here, just under the mulch. These guys do tend to send out um, lateral roots a bit, so you end up with uh, a couple of potatoes sort of satelliting away from the main plant. That just gives you some idea of the length of the little satellite roots that these things throw out just underneath the mulch. Absolutely fantastic. 
Oh, there's a few more I missed. So these potatoes are definitely a great one for us, just the fact that they can volunteer and they do appear to be a lot more disease resistant than other varieties that we've grown. So I'm pretty chuffed about that. Also very um, pleased with the amount of compost worms I'm seeing in here too. So I've just come across the um, turmeric here. So what I might do is I might grab the garden fork and see if we can um, just lift this little turmeric root. Don't know how much of a root's going to be down here. Oh, some nice golden fingers. Well, that's not too bad at all. And another giant worm. Pop you over here, matey. Oh, wow. That's rather big down there. Some more turmeric. It's going to have another crack at this turmeric down here because I think there's more down there. Tell you the truth. Oh, yeah, I can hear it. There we go. Plus some spuds as well. I think that's about it for these um, potatoes. I don't think I'm going to find many more over this side. This is another common thing we see around the garden, little lizard eggs. So I like to tuck them down the side of the beds when I come across them. So we're just going to move down this way now. I don't think they come back much further than here. So there's a couple on the surface here, small ones. More for the pouch. If you've seen our clips, you'll know I don't really have a lot of um, success growing potatoes. But these purple Congos, since I've let them grow as volunteers, I've had more success with them than I have with any other bar one crop, I think. Pretty chuffed about the way that they've gone here in the patch. I think that's pretty much all it. I'll grab my spuds and turmeric and we'll go weigh them up. So we've moved up to the shade and I've given these guys a bit of a clean off with the hose, just a little compost sieve. And I thought we'll just pop them in this bowl here and give them a bit of a weigh up. So I just teared off the bowl there. We'll pop these spuds in. And then I'll go pick up all the ones that I've spilt over the sides. And what do we got? There we go. We're just over two kilograms. And I think that's over just uh, around about four pounds, maybe a little bit more. It definitely will come down a bit when you take out bits of grass and the mulch and turmeric leaf that are also in there. I'm very chuffed with the amount of these large size spuds we got. Um, yeah, these guys will end up being going into a mash or maybe just as boiled chunks. These small ones down here, believe it or not, I'm going to save these guys and I'm going to give one of my lucky daughters the awesome opportunity to scrub them in a bowl of water with a brush. And we're going to make up some bite-sized potato salad tonight, I think, maybe. We'll just wait and see, see how motivated they are. So, two kilograms, I'm very pleased with that. It's not often I have a decent harvest here. One thing I just wanted to show you with these spuds, this one here I think is the most diseased I found in the patch. So I do think these guys are a lot hardier than the other potato varieties that we've grown. None of these smaller ones seem to have any amount of scab on them. I can't really see any. Oh, I lie. Sorry, I found a little bit on that one there. But the majority, majority of them don't appear to have much scab on them. Some of these larger ones do. There's a little bit of an outbreak there. So as a disease resistant variety, definitely better than others that we've grown in the patch. Um, my future potatoes are all being grown in brand new potting soil, including the ones I hope to plant out by the end of the week. They're going into new potting soil uh, with some fertilizer so I don't pass on the scab from the compost. So, so here's a bit of a look at the inside of these potatoes. Beautiful dark purple coloring there. Makes an awesome purple mashed potato for the kids. A little bit of a white stripe in some of the smaller ones. And same again with this small one. I have had a couple that are predominantly white with a purple stripe in them. But yeah, it looks like these guys are nice and healthy and they've got a nice purple all the way through the flesh there. While we're at it, we might as well weigh up the turmeric to see what we ended up with. So there we go, 1.2 kilos. So definitely a nice harvest there, considering I didn't even plan it. It just popped up by itself. I will lose a fair bit of weight when I snip off these small little rooty bits. And there are a couple of pieces in here that probably, yeah, they're starting to rot a bit. I may have actually hit that with the garden fork when I pulled it out. So I'm pretty chuffed with those two small harvests. I mean, the turmeric's just icing on the cake and will come in handy because we're running out of the turmeric paste in the freezer. The spuds, I mean, if you've seen some of our previous potato harvest clips, I've got to be happy with that. I cannot complain at all, especially seeing as I really didn't pay much attention to them whatsoever. 
to get you know that amount of a harvest from them so definitely something will be growing again and i take it'll be whether we like it or not just the way that they grow so there you go so if this is the first time you've seen one of our clips and you found it enjoyable it'd be great to have you hit that little subscribe button up there and you can come back and say g'day whenever we post further harvest or garden clips on our small little backyard farm and aquaponics system I do hope everyone is well and happy and that your gardens are booming and I will catch you next clip. Cheers folks! I know a few of you folks would want to know what these guys look like cooked so I'm making up some potato salad tonight. First of all though I'm just going through them after giving them a scrub and nipping off any of the scab lesions I'm finding. I found a few of these small ones had a little bit on there, not too much though. And from there I'll be popping them in some water to boil and I'll give you a bit of a look once they're done. So here's a bit of a look at how the potatoes turned out after they were boiled for potato salad. Some of them held their colour fairly well, while others pretty much well lost all of it. So it's hard to know if that one was actually purple all the way through. I can tell you though that the water was fairly blue when I poured it out of the pot. So there you go. Just gives you a bit of an idea on um, how these potatoes turned out after they were cooked. So here's the potato salad. I'm using the celery and the green onion from the patch and some... Um, Red capsicum or red pepper we bought and cashews. I love roasted cashews with my potato salad and I have also been known to put bacon in there so try and get a little bit of everything. Oh the only thing I haven't put in here yet is um, salt and pepper. We tend to do that on the plate because not everyone likes uh, pepper with their potato salad. And the dressing. The dressing is a um, two parts uh, sour cream to one part mayonnaise. I think I'll put a little bit too much in tonight so um, I'm going to give this a taste test, off camera of course. Mm. Absolutely divine. This is one of my favourite salads. I would double dip but uh, it's on camera and the girls will get me in trouble. Um, the only other variation we do on this is Bianca likes to add some boiled eggs, hard boiled eggs in. Um, but yeah, not tonight. And we don't normally put them in if we're putting bacon in. So. There you go folks, just a bit of a look on how I've used up these, or well, the smaller purple Congo potatoes from the harvest. Cheers guys, have a great one.